Hello. Uh, hello, all. Uh, my name is Mateusz Adamczyk, and uh, I'm a partner in an uh, office called Butsut. Um, Butsut is from Krakow, Poland, and I'm running the office with uh, my partner Agata. Uh, so, to explain ourselves, uh, I will talk a bit about our name, and uh, our name describes our method. Uh, so, the name is Butsut, and it's uh, rooted in uh, or it's, um, uh, it's uh, composed of two words, but and sut, and it's a homage to an early uh, capitalistic names um, uh, from 90s, because we feel that 90s uh, is the best time of all, as everything was still possible, um, all the experiments were allowed. And as you can see here, there are different names with uh, but and but, uh, that means uh, uh, to uh, to build, and uh, it was typical in the 90s to use that to describe uh, the area of expertise for those construction companies. But none of the architects were using it, and we found it very strange because it's something typically for for Poland. So we wanted to uh, take it as as a part of our own name, and then suit means uh, uh, miracle uh, because we still believe uh, that architecture can uh, bring a better future for us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I grew up in the city of Katowice, which uh, is an industrial town on the south of Poland, and in a district called Koszutka. And this district, uh, uh, this neighborhood was erected in the uh, 50s and 60s, just after the war, as an experimental estate. And all the typologies that you can imagine, and type of public spaces and uh, programs uh, were uh, uh, created there. Uh, so growing in this kind of vibrant uh, uh, situation was very inspiring and uh, it somehow pushed me to uh, study and work as an architect, uh, which, which my main interest is to design this kind of urban landscape right now. So I will show a few projects uh, that uh, are showing our attitude toward uh, building urban fabric and uh, what we think is important and what are our uh, working methods. So the first project is a very early project. I was still a student and uh, we did a competition uh, um, to design a kind of a link between two important uh, public institutions in uh, um, Paris. Uh, so it's the uh, Palais de Tokyo, which is a contemporary art institution and Musée de Clive Brown. I don't know if I uh, spell it correctly, because not, but uh, it's a museum for uh, primitive arts, indigenous cultures like uh, Africa, both Americas or Asia. And uh, it now uh, is connected by a bridge, uh, but there is a lot of uh, obstacles and it's really hard to get from one uh, to another. So uh, the thing that is always for us important is to look back and see uh, what's hidden uh, inside the city structure and to do this high, uh, kind of archaeology. So we found that actually there was an island before in that location between those two museums. And as in uh, before, for instance, Katsanavona in Rome was before a, a stadium, we thought it's nice also to, to, to give it back somehow and to create this uh, not only a link, but a kind of a public space uh, on the uh, on, on the river, uh, a kind of an island or an outline of an island. So the other thing that was uh, important for us was this kind of types of of, of a way how you commute through Paris. And so you have all those ring uh, roads, uh, this ring culture, and those different uh, um, the networks. Uh, so we created this kind of loop with nodes, and that were linked to those uh, institutions. And then the other thing that was uh, visible for us in the fabric of the city was that all the important buildings have this kind of square in front of them, or uh, there is this kind of uh, organized greenery, very formal one uh, between those buildings. So we thought, okay, so this public space shouldn't be only a public space, but it should be also uh, perceived as a park. And as a result, we have this kind of park, uh, which was a loop with those nodes uh, on two levels. And it, by introducing different grounds 
uh, and lifts and different type of public spaces. We have introduced this kind of vibrant uh, link between those buildings and a kind of a new destination on, uh, on SCF. And also we found that often people are jogging along those boulevards, but uh, somewhere where the bridge, the existing bridge is now, uh, it ends because we cannot go uh, further. So by using this loop, we can go back and have this constant uh, jogging destination along the river. The other important aspect was that the city is not a flat, and so you have all those, those different uh, um, levels. And in order to understand or design a city, you need to connect them uh, well or understand them well. So it was a very uh, good lesson for us in that stage. And the other thing to designing such a, an industrial or let's say um, rational structure, or, or it's not rational well for some, but for us it is, we need to understand a bit of the technology and by adding this kind of park on, on the upper level, we have designed these uh, columns that will bring uh, air um, uh, and uh, different scents from those flowers uh, that are on the upper level to the bottom. And then also the whole thing becomes uh, much more uh, open and uh, and the, 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 the way how it is designed, our goal was to, to have it uh, as far from the kind of uh, ecologies of, of bridges that we know in the city as possible. So the outcome is uh, this kind of segment of spaces. So on the left, uh, as you can see on the model, uh, it's the existing museum of fashion, then it's the Palais uh, de Tokyo, which is the famous art institution. And then there is the, the bridge that we propose, uh, which is this uh, loop uh, or park or public space. Uh, and then on the right, you have the Jean Nouvel Museum of Primitive Art. Uh, so that was one of our first uh, projects uh, that, uh, but through doing this, during the time we did it, we established a lot of different strategies or tools that we use quite often uh, still uh, today. And it was one of the most important projects uh, from those early stages pages for me as an architect. Uh, the other project I would like to show is a kind of commentary on the on the on the on Poland in general or maybe uh, Central Europe uh, from 10 years ago. Uh, it was a competition, one of the first competitions that we won as architects. Uh, it was an urban design for around 50 hectares of land uh, uh, in almost in the central part of Warsaw, next, next to one of the train stations, which now is a kind of uh, abandoned space uh, uh, with one dominating function, which is the gas source. So uh, to do competitions in Warsaw was important for us because Poland is extremely centralized, so everything happened only in Warsaw. And uh, to understand it, uh, we wanted to, to, to understand also how Warsaw uh, is organized, how it's growing, and what are the most uh, important factors of the, of, the, of the public. And we described the city as this kind of a star with the spaces in between those hands of the star, which are kind of abandoned spaces, a bit green, uh, with less uh, density, uh, with some uh, main traffic, uh, uh, routes, uh, but these are the, the, the places that have the greatest potential because the other part is already heavily developed. So all the, let's say, new uh, developments or possibilities happen in those uh, places in between the hands of the star. Um, and our site was exactly there. So this is a kind of abstract map uh, showing, uh, let's say, uh, placing our site uh, in one of those uh, spaces in between those hands. So on the right side, you can see this is described as scale A. So you have like Warsaw. So typical Warsaw from that time was like great places, but uh, with certain distance between them. So you could find those spaces that were really defined and uh, vibrant, but uh, you couldn't actually walk in between them. It was always a great distance, so you needed to travel. So it was a city that you needed to know in order to uh, have fun or uh, to use it uh, in a in a a nice way because that, that during that time still everybody was kind of hating Warsaw and there was a lot of articles about how Warsaw is an awful city to live in. And uh, then you have all this kind of uh, this kind of spaces that are floating from the center towards the suburbs that are extremely chaotic 
and or unorganized, where there are no rules and there is a mixture of scale, typology, and uh, different forms. And our uh, site was somewhere between uh, this kind of extremely chaotic uh, place on the outside of the city and then the, the defined center. But then looking at the map, you can still say, oh, it's a kind of a chaos. And uh, the normal attitude would say, uh, right then was to make every, like to place everything on a certain grid and make it more organized. But the organization means always to introduce a certain grid or a certain kind of orthogonal structure. But what we said or we were thinking is in this kind of chaotic situation, there is a system. And why not to try to uh, work on it and uh, uh, let's find what we can uh, achieve by uh, making it even more chaotic, let's say, but in an organized way. Uh, so we were uh, finding different typologies in this area and trying to link them by introducing new uh, kind of uh, hybrids of buildings and public spaces and greenery. And uh, all together also by creating new connections uh, for uh, pedestrians or for cars and buses and uh, trains, uh, we were able to create this kind of lively neighborhood. And our main goal was to design a place where people coming from suburbs or from some kind of village outside of the city and moving to Warsaw uh, to study or for the first uh, work, that would be the, the destination for them. So it would be something like a, some kind of a place where you can uh, start your uh, kind of uh, uh, adventure with, with the city. So come coming from a small house with a garden maybe where you are kind of um, uh, used to a kind of open spaces and a lot of greenery, then you're coming normally to a, to a block of flat in some space that has almost no public spaces during that time in Poland and there is a kind of a shop. So this neighborhood could be combined with different typologies where you could find your place and then maybe move to some other place in Warsaw further. So we had different uh, um, ambitions. Uh, we wanted to enhance green network, to create connections, to describe uh, site icons, to add new ones, or to uh, discover existing. Like for instance, we found that there's a really nice campus uh, for, from a local hospital that has this qualities to become something almost like a charity campus in Berlin, but no one knows about it and it's really kind of hidden. So by bringing out those functions that existed and adding functions next to it or describing the proper way how to you enter those spaces, you could bring out a very uh, pleasant uh, neighborhood. And at the end, the, the, the important thing was to combine this kind of mix of functions, just because if now Warsaw uh, is all about traveling far distances between spots, why not to create a kind of a mini city within a city where you can walk everywhere in the 10, 15 minutes distance, which then in 10 years ago, it was something not very common or no one was thinking about a city like that in Poland. Every uh, urban planner was still uh, thinking about uh, uh, monolithic uh, zones in a city and uh, um, uh, making kind of uh, distinctions between the, the housing areas and, and the commercial or, or areas for work. And those kind of experiments happen in Warsaw, but now they trying to bring this kind of attitude towards them, because as we know, it's not the city that uh, can be sustained uh, for a longer period of time. So also like we didn't want us to like uh, place another strange uh, building or, or strange appearance uh, with, with strange appearance into the mix already, but just more like creating kind of hybrids. So by blending landscape public function and uh, different uh, functions, we, come, we came with this uh, different uh, typologies, and then we uh, 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 blended in within uh, the existing structures. So, but in fact, the main goal of this design was to design this, this one piece of the land, but it was kind of far uh, um, uh, on the side itself, and it was disconnected from the from the city or from the places that were really kind of uh, vibrant right now. So we thought it's super important also to design uh, all the uh, area around it first, uh, because if you just do that, then you have another disconnected island in the city. So here you can uh, see one of the working models and uh, 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 it just shows uh, how uh, um, different uh, it's, uh, the 
this, this different typologies, how they blend together and they all together create this kind of a mixture of, of open spaces, green spaces, and those different hybrids of buildings. But altogether, we believe it could uh, work as a kind of a, a, a mixture between an urban landscape and, a, and a, an exciting park, uh, as a new uh, possibility for something typical uh, Central European or Southern. Uh, one of another uh, early projects is much smaller, but it also shows that we work uh, on smaller scale with similar goals or similar tools to this greater scale. So it was a competition in Japan. We were one of the over the teams. It was uh, a big thing for us because we, there was like 600 entries or something like this for this one. We named it Cross of a Jungle 4000 because we, it, it prepared uh, uh, for kind of a gym equipment, fitness equipment. And uh, I will explain the whole project and then you will understand why, why, why we called it like that. So the, the competition was about to design uh, 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 four houses on this, uh, on this plot, which consists of this, uh, uh, which is a grid. And it's based on uh, John Hayduk famous nine uh, square grid uh, problem task. And that was introduced, I believe, in 60s or 70s in New York for students. And uh, uh, the task was also to, to blend kind of technology with, with, with the uh, landscape. And those four houses shouldn't be bigger, each of those houses shouldn't be bigger than 162 meters. And uh, the outcome should be something like this. So you have this kind of suburban situation, and then uh, you have those ideal plots, and each plot is a mixture between landscape and, uh, and house, and uh, it all together create this kind of park, uh, or, or this kind of new quality of urban life, uh, suburban life, sorry. So we, were, we started to think how to uh, approach this. And uh, we, first, we, we, we try to recognize who is the uh, inhabitant of, of, of such a space. So we, we were looking at this kind of typical suburban situation and the routine. So the routine for us was, you know, like this kind of repeated loop. So you wake up, you have those morning routines, then you travel to your work, and you do something after the work. Maybe you do shopping or sport or whatever, take kids out of school, you come back, you travel back to those suburbs, and then you have your evening routines. And that thing, uh, repeats through uh, the whole year, uh, basically every day, uh, almost the same. So that was something that uh, struck us, and we were thinking, oh, maybe this is some kind of uh, quality, or from that we could use some kind of quality, or uh, for to describe uh, this kind of houses for for this kind of people. And uh, we were also thinking like uh, who the families could be, and we uh, described those families, uh, four of those families, through sixteen different. Uh, functions for, for those families. And we put those kind of uh, loops with uh, the basic functions on the grid to uh, start to kind of add it by adding more and more functions. We started to manipulate the grid in 3D in order to have like a path of the house or like how the uh, houses can interconnect together to create this kind of mixture of constant house with landscape that is a kind of you know, hybrid between one and, and other. And uh, it's just like showing different sites, how we kind of uh, started to, you know, adding more and more to the functions, some conflicts were appearing. And uh, of course, then we needed to modify the, the house itself in order to, uh, to get rid of the conflict and have this, let's say, ideal situation. At the end, we had those paths. And then we knew that the house cannot be more than 162 meters, but the different paths have different lengths. So, at, at, at the end, uh, those houses uh, were like corridor type, right? Because they couldn't be wider because then they will access the, the amount of kilometers that we could apply. And this is the outcome. So you have the house, but it's not one, it's like actually four, they interconnect and uh, it's a constant kind of, uh, uh, you know, adventure going through it because it's not flat. Uh, it's actually uh, different ramps and those floating little kind of rooms uh, for those different uh, things you do through your whole day. So it uh, starts to become something boring and uh, the house itself can be a kind of adventure and that uh, wakes you up from those uh, routines that you are kind of accustomed to already. 
And uh, this is like a simple model that we did for, for to just show how the house looked. And there are some uh, very uh, basic sketches uh, uh, showing this kind of adventure like uh, that you get going through those houses. Uh, this is a project that we did like with uh, 30 other architects. Uh, it's called Nobel Zerniki. It's a new neighborhood in Wrocław. And uh, it was a very ambitious pro project at the beginning because uh, in Wrocław uh, there is one estate built from the Bergbund era, which was this uh, German, let's say, experiment neighborhood. As Wrocław was a German town called Breslau before. And when Wrocław uh, became the European capital of culture, the local architects, they uh, wanted to, uh, to somehow, you know, uh, do something together to commemorate that, that uh, we have the Bergbund, actually no one even remember before that, that we have this kind of jam hidden in the city and to propose this new uh, master plan uh, for this new district. So uh, we worked all together uh, pro bono on this uh, just to, you know, uh, give uh, uh, all, all the best, all the kind of thoughts that we have. And, 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 but it was hard, of course, because we had 30 different, you know, architects and uh, they all trying to uh, apply the OIDs and so we struggled, especially here. This is like the, on the left, you can see there is this kind of building, which was a kind of a corner building, uh, which was a, like a kind of a gateway to the whole estate. And there was a big kind of ambition to build that as a huge wall. So we were pushing really hard to make it maybe terraced or to introduce some holes in it, just to make it more accessible towards the uh, the estate itself, and also because at the very end of it, there was an existing estate consisted, consist, uh, consisting uh, of uh, single family houses. So, uh, coming up from like almost 30 meters in height to uh, 5 meters in height, uh, it's a big uh, jump, so we didn't want that. So, we somehow managed to maybe um, uh, convince our colleagues that, that it's good to do something like this and then and they gave us also one of the plots to, to work on. But then the other issue was that because uh, everyone knew that there would be like some kind of private investors uh, uh, working on those plots <laughs> further, so we need to introduce a lot of parameters that uh, they could make a kind of a profit. And uh, the outcome was that there was this absolute depth of the, of the, of the proposed uh, uh, building in the master plan because it was 28 meters. And you cannot really introduce uh, housing uh, in a building that is 28 meters deep unless you cut it, the, cut it extremely and no one didn't want, like other aspects really didn't want to do that. So we did this uh, small project just to manifest the, this kind of situation that for us was an absurd situation, but it could be turned into something really positive and a new type of, uh, of, 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 type, of new typology that would exist through the whole uh, line there. And uh, yeah, so we proposed basically to cut our site in two and to uh, bring those very uh, narrow but high uh, buildings with this void in between that become this ultimate uh, public uh, neighborhood uh, kind of space for, for the inhabitants. And uh, by doing so, uh, we've created this kind of public space and another entrance to the uh, um, uh, state itself. We've also shifted a bit those buildings in order to bring more life and air into the, uh, into the flats. And we decided to have just one flat uh, on each floor because then we could ventilate it naturally and we could have a natural light during the whole day. So at the end, we have balconies and then the flat is designed in such a way that you could actually accommodate bigger family, smaller family, or some single person with a small business in, in one of them. And that was like kind of a collage that we did, just showing how it will cut through the, the, this huge mass that, uh, that was envisioned in the master plan. And also like explaining that you can imagine that it's the whole wall consists of this kind of really tall, but uh, uh, narrow houses. And then in between you have this uh, uh, open spaces. It was a kind of a manifesto just to show how uh, even working on something ambitious, uh, the outcome could be something really absurd. Another one. Uh, 
And the other project uh, is a quarter. Uh, it was Jewish. Uh, uh, quarter, uh, it's located, sorry, in a, in a Jewish district in Krakow. And uh, it was a project for the 25th Jewish Culture Festival. And uh, we were asked to uh, design this kind of uh, new neighborhood uh, for uh, take to, to erect to be erected for for this uh, festival and um, and just to uh, kind of ensure that it will add in some kind of new qualities to the urban fabric of of, of the district um, because as uh, we know like uh, the district in Krakow. Uh, has all those famous squares uh, with a really intense nightlife and, and also like intense kind of uh, use during the day, but uh, they are heavily com commercial commercialized. So uh, it, it consists only for, from kind of cafes and restaurants, but there is no bench, no place where you can sit and not pay to do so. So in, in fact, you have those beautiful public spaces, beautiful, beautiful squares, but they are not really public, they are kind of, you know, uh, commercialized. So um, this is something that we were working on. And uh, together with the, with, the, with the client, we found this abandoned uh, green space on the back of the synagogue, and we wanted to turn it into some kind of uh, mini neighborhood for the uh, locals, uh, that they could use it during the summer and during the uh, festival time. And uh, it was a, a simple kind of idea to, to uh, place this kind of central space as, as one of those squares on, 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 on Kazimierz and then uh, surrounded with uh, three volumes with three uh, functions. So one was a kind of a library and the other was a small uh, cafe and, and uh, a workshop for graphic designers, Gelada Studio from Israel that were invited by the festival to come and to uh, create this kind of three workshops uh, uh, for uh, for people during the festival, and the architecture is kind of vernacular because the whole neighborhood uh, has this kind of you know it's an, it's an old uh, neighborhood, and uh, we wanted uh, this architecture uh, not to stand out from the architecture point of view, like you know like screaming that we are something new, but uh, rather to bring those qualities that are missing and uh, materials that are really kind of simple and uh, down to earth. So um, also like the important factor was to uh, kind of uh, um, make it uh, easy to, to, to be constructed and uh, also dismantled after the festival and then uh, the possibility of recycling was also an issue. Uh, so because of this kind of temporality, we needed uh, to raise up the whole structure from the ground, but this gave us an opportunity to create this kind of uh, square, the yellow square, because all the public was uh, covered with this yellow just to pop out and to you know, easily understand, oh, okay, that's public. Uh, uh, then this, this, by elevating it, that, that it started to be used with like kids, kids were playing on the edge, people were sitting using it as a bench. So at the end, it's really nice because you, you sit between the buildings. And then you have this kind of vistas, you know, like should you look into uh, to the outside uh, from between those pavilions. And also like those, uh, as I was saying, like the architecture is vernacular, we use simple natural materials, uh, um, a lot of wood, uh, transparent uh, barrel uh, panels. Uh, and, uh, but we thought that by using those materials, we can create a really pleasant atmosphere full of light, air, and kind of welcoming and, uh, and nice to, to spend time with. And the other thing was that uh, the, the stage has this kind of roof uh, that was protecting from sun and, uh, and rain, but also it created this kind of opening for a stage because the whole uh, plot was kind of lower than the ground, than the street next to it. And there was a kind of a slope. So during uh, evenings, there was always a kind of a lecture or a concert or a party. And all the people were uh, sitting on this kind of slope. And also by, because we use this kind of transparent material uh, in the pavilions and there was light inside, it, it works as a lantern. So from far away, people were seen uh, as a kind of a destination and something is going on there. So it was advertising itself by 
they just lighting it, uh, lighting as a, as a kind of lantern. So, uh, so going from this kind of temporary structures, now I will show some kind of urban prototyping and uh, in different scales. So first, we, we will, I will talk a bit about kind of uh, urban furniture that we designed and also as the methods that uh, you can use and what, what, what can you get from that. So we were doing this kind of uh, research uh, slash uh, strategy for the city of Warsaw. Uh, and uh, it, the task was to, to work on this Street called Towarowa, which is a very big and wide street, uh, wide street, about almost 100 meters wide. It's really hard to cross it. And now there is a lot of high rises uh, on that street, and um, it's really perceived from the perspective of inhabitants as a huge barrier. And they don't like it, and um, it's kind of bordering the city center. And uh, but we were also looking because we saw that there is a lot of potential in the greenery again. And that there are some kind of green spaces, but really in a bad shape. And we looked um, uh, how, uh, if there is a kind of a park there, because people are complaining the, that uh, it's uh, such an awful uh, space to live in. And we couldn't find any because we need to go at least 30 minutes to, to get to another park. So we thought, okay, so maybe by just reusing all those different plots around the street, which are now empty or will be developed uh, towards those high rises, we can turn them in this new park and create this kind of, uh, you know, destination or, or, or you don't uh, just have those high rises around the uh, uh, street, but instead they are uh, standing inside of a park and the street is not uh, that visible or perceived as a barrier anymore. And then the city was maybe interested in that scenario, but the most maybe what they were interested in was to, because we also said, okay, but everything happens in time, it's quite a dynamic process, but you can do something quite fast. And we propose to do this kind of uh, furniture, urban furniture, in order to prototype the most, uh, the spaces that has the most potential to be uh, turned into this kind of key, you know, places where the park can grow and people will meet there and uh, start to perceive this, this whole area differently. Uh, so they ask us to do those kind of uh, furniture design. And uh, so then again, because those spaces were still there, but like the green spaces, but mostly they were in a bad shape. We thought, okay, it's important to kind of, if we do the urban furniture, it should also consist of some greenery of a pot and should mimic this kind of, you know, uh, landscape uh, and maybe even trees. So um, we uh, designed this, this simple uh, typology consisting of a kind of a bench with a pot. Uh, and then there is a kind of umbrella that will grow, uh, which will be outgrown or will just grow through the whole umbrella. There, sorry. There will be like greenery going onto the umbrella itself because it's out of a street map. And we were, we were like really happy with the outcome or the, uh, but it's, it, it's a good thing. And also looking at the now and at the climate change and, uh, and the extremely hot waves in the summer, we thought they are the shape is also a thing that is important. And um, so then um, the furniture could also exist without this uh, umbrella, but it could also be arranged in bigger groups to form some kind of a playground or urban situation. And, uh, but then like we did all the design, but didn't really have the um, control over the placement of those, uh, of those furniture, the way how they were kind of uh, brought to life. So the umbrella was kind of skipped because back then there was still not really a, a big discussion about those gateways, just the, came just one later after. <laughs> so it's a bit of shame uh, because it's believed, it, 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 but then they place them next to trees and on spaces that we didn't want them to be placed because it, they were placed in all the new public spaces that already existed there uh, next to those high rises. And uh, we wanted those uh, furniture to be in those abandoned spaces, the ones that maybe have potential, but we don't know yet. So that was a bit of misunderstanding, but anyway, it's good that we added some of those furniture around and people can use it uh, and you know, you can use it, you can move it. And, and may, maybe in future, there will be more of them. Other project like that uh, was done in Krakow. Um, we were asked to design some kind of 
to revitalize basically a space around the, the biggest uh, monument in Krakow, which is the Babel Castle, a very important thing for Poland. And, um, there is a new uh, uh, tourist center built about 10 years ago. And uh, it consists mostly of, of, of granite and there is no benches, there is no greenery. It's just a huge uh, empty space uh, sunken in the ground, you know, completely uh, like a lot of granite and concrete. And of course, somehow people avoid that space. So it's not really used. Uh, the city has a problem with it. So they wanted to bring a bit of life. Uh, and uh, we proposed, again, this kind of family of furniture, but then also more different types from furniture that will bring shade to uh, places where you can sit and always you have them in the greenery and uh, through some places where you can play and have fun also for kids. And we envision it as a kind of a new uh, uh, typology of the garden. So it's like composed of this kind of uh, elements that are like furniture like maybe, but also greenery. And by having all those different abstract forms, you have this kind of new type of, of garden uh, and playground within the city. And the other thing that was uh, really important for us was that uh, one of the queens living in the castle was uh, Bona Sforza. She was uh, Italian uh, wife of, of a Polish king and she brought uh, all the veg vegetables to, to Poland. Uh, and uh, just to commemorate, to, to commemorate the fact we uh, designed all the plants to be edible. So people were really kind of looking at those plants and, uh, and, and trying to smell them, kind of was trying to eat some of them, which we, we found it nice because that's exactly what we want. We wanted the people to engage with this, not just only sit on them, but have this kind of, you know, uh, maybe it's not looking only on your phone, but maybe it's looking at the green, maybe tasting things and, and playing with that. And then the other factor was also to uh, understand the uh, physical type uh, topography of the place and designing the furniture, you know, and it's blended with the existing topography. And another project uh, uh, dealing with kind of prototyping is on a completely different scale. Um, it's a, it's a uh, uh, prototyping of, of a new main square for Warsaw. And this was a project done together with the city of Warsaw and the Museum of Modern Art, because uh, um, next to this site, uh, uh, it's now already this area is under construction and there will be this uh, new Museum of Modern Art, which will redefine the whole area, which now serves as a kind of park. And uh, I don't know if you, if you know that, but we have this uh, in Warsaw, in the middle of Warsaw, in the most, let's say, uh, uh, central uh, spot, we have this palace of, uh, for culture, which was a gift from Soviets to, to Polish nation. And uh, it has a, a really uh, big open space around it that before was meant uh, for some kind of festivals and also to give this kind of, you know, to, to give it to the building this kind of, you know, scale and uh, um, that you can see it from everywhere and this kind of dominant uh, appearance. But now uh, it's not uh, this kind of you know, open space anymore. It basically, it's a big parking. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, people don't like it, basically. And uh, the idea is that after many, many years of struggling on what to do around it, there, is, uh, uh, there was a competition to, to build the Museum of Modern Art as a part of a new master plan. Uh, that's one of the renderings of this museum and that uh, will uh, start with this kind of transformation of that area and uh, uh, also because there, there, there is a plan to mirror that building on the other side with some other function that we create this kind of central square that will be this the central uh, square in Warsaw. So uh, we wanted to, to, to show it this kind of potential by, uh, by defining its uh, size and showing the scale of it. So uh, because right now it's a really big open area and the square will be much smaller than the space itself, but it will be still very big for the standard of urban square. And it will serve as this kind of open space that you could uh, basically uh, arrange uh, for different events or uh, I just had this, you know, kind of square that uh, will uh, be kind of iconic uh, 
uh, for the city. And uh, the, the white spots uh, uh, are existing protected uh, infrastructure on the square. So it's mainly like a kind of a prison that exists there. Then uh, we uh, introduced this kind of uh, uh, super uh, graphics on the, on the existing just to show the scale of it. So we, 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 were, we were trying to, to, to show uh, different squares from Warsaw, but also from different places in Europe. And the one uh, from uh, uh, United States, like this Times Square, just to show the reference of the square. So um, then the other thing on the far right, uh, in the upper corner, there is this kind of black uh, pavilion. And that pavilion is showing other things like scale of the detail of the square. So some existing details, but also uh, future details of the planned buildings that will be around. Just to show also to the, to the people, uh, you know, what is the scale of a person next to, uh, uh, for instance, uh, the ground level of a building of a detail or a detail of the building. And the other thing was this kind of baggage pan, so this kind of uh, 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 columns that we place around the square, and those, this we took from this kind of typical Swiss uh, uh, um, tool that they used to uh, show uh, how uh, the building will look like a new building that they are planning. So everyone can, can, uh, can have a thought about it. And there is a kind of a, uh, open discussion if the building and the scale of the building is uh, proper uh, for the plant site. And in this case, we didn't show the, the scale of the building, but more like the scale of the, uh, of the facade of the square. So we wanted to show how high the facades around it uh, uh, would be and where the openings are. So the first element was this graphic that we superimposed. And uh, there is already a lot of graphic for this parking, but by adding those layers, we just were showing uh, the potential of the, of the place and actually how many uh, different formats it can take when there is a, just a big open uh, space. Um, then the Baugesch pan, uh, which were this kind of uh, columns, and it, on top of each of the column was a, a flag uh, designed by uh, artists from, Broth, uh, from uh, uh, Warsaw. And uh, those flags were um, describing different activities that could happen on the, on the square. And then finally, there was this pavilion. Uh, simple pavilion where all the different kind of events were happening considering the festival and, uh, uh, and they were advertising also the exhibition that happened in the Palace of Culture. And the exhibition was about uh, the history of the place, the history of the square, and also the potential that it could uh, bring in the future. And uh, as you can see, like the black thing is, uh, is a kind of, uh, this is the pavilion, let's say. Mm, it's like a little shrine, and then uh, under it, uh, you have those white elements that are like these different kind of infrastructure elements. You have a simplified chandelier from the palace. You have this kind of tribune, or you have a, a, a part of the arcade of, of the building. So uh, it was, uh, you know, um, ambitious project because the scale was huge. It was very hard to um, to bring it to life because of the different uh, um, uh, different situations that we need to solve uh, by taking out the bus station that was occupying the whole square in that place. By because there were some plots uh, on that square are uh, private and you know. Just showing that this kind of chaotic situation works in a way, but at the end, if anyone who uh, was there could see like the potential of the square and the scale of it, and that was what was about. And the other thing uh, uh, that you can see on this image is it's a striking image on one hand, but the, 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 the sad situation and it's also like a, the, how the city is growing, unfortunately, is that you can you can see all those new buildings and they are really kind of they have this kind of new public spaces around them. But then all the public buildings, like this Palace of Culture, you have all this kind of undeveloped space around it. So this kind of shift from uh, where uh, 10, 20, 30 years ago, where the public was uh, responsible for, uh, public sector was responsible for all these kind of decisions, uh, considering the public space, now there's this situation that the best public space in Warsaw is actually a space built uh, by a developer around a high rise. So this is a big uh, shift, and I, I think like this project, and now it's followed by a, a, it was followed by a competition, and, and 
now a real realization of that square. It's an important kind of mark that not only like the private sector is doing those kind of uh, public spaces, uh, but still, still uh, the, the, the public uh, could or should uh, uh, or be responsible to, to, to make those uh, spaces and to shape the, the, the city because this is the most uh, sustained way of shaping the, the, the city done in democratic way by, uh, by a public sector. And there was also a funny thing because during that time there was the first um, uh, uh, issue of a, of, a, of a Vogue Poland and uh, Jürgen Teller, a famous photographer, did a shot with the famous Polish uh, uh, model and she was cleaning <laughs> basically the, the, the graphic that she had designed when, during that day that they were dismantling the whole situation. And um, okay, so uh, from those kind of uh, urban prototyping and this uh, this project, this is a project dealing with the kind of uh, um, revitalization because this is a kind of uh, um, revitalization of uh, of existing pier in Mendelsdroy, which is like on the Baltic coast. So now this pier, um, you can only walk on them and it's really in a bad shape. And uh, in order to enter it, you need to go to a kind of a, of a, of a commercial building. And um, that was a, a competition that we did. We were uh, one of the awarded architects. And the, the, the thing was to design, of course, some kind of a, a, a commercial program of it. But our ambition was to create this kind of uh, urban situation and to bring as much possible uh, uh, the public as much public program on it uh, as we can as here is uh, for us a full, fully uh, public uh, function so um, uh, there was a planning document showing um, and the, the planning document was describing the area that could be built on that pier and to put each kind of new island let's say we can create along the pier and uh, um, basically, it, it consisted of those three islands and the new entrance to the pier. And we didn't discuss with the, let's say, the shapes of the islands that were kind of superimposed by the, by the, by the officials. We wanted to create the, the, the most perfect kind of uh, environment inside those kind of islands uh, in order to, to bring more life to Mendozoya and to, to give this quality uh, uh, that is missing there. So the first thing was the kind of entrance, where, how you enter from the city and from the beach to the pier. Right now, you just always need to go through that building that you keep, see here. So we have added this kind of uh, uh, kind of a bridge uh, on the left of the building that you could enter without going through that, and also a new uh, entrance to the, uh, to the to the beach. And uh, the, the characteristic thing. Uh, <laughs> In Mzdroje is that there are those uh, huge slopes or, uh, uh, with uh, with like kind of a lot of trees on, on them, and there are staircases going down to the beach, so it's a really kind of nice attraction. So we wanted to somehow you know create this uh, this entrance to the beach uh, that will somehow uh, look uh, similar to the existing land, landscape. So this is this kind of a green uh, staircase going down, and below you have an existing bar that we somehow reshaped into a new form under the uh, staircase. And the first island was meant to be housing uh, and uh, with some kind of uh, shopping uh, building. And we, we didn't want to do that. We wanted to be quite simple and create this kind of island that that is, you know, like residential, but yet it has this kind of qualities of a small town. So it has this kind of, you know, different little square in between the buildings. And we, uh, uh, we wanted to have all the kind of um, services and, and commercial uh, businesses uh, on the ground floor as, as in a regular, let's say, uh, urban situation. And by doing so, we have created, you know, this, this, let's say, little village, uh, with simple building, simple materials. The only thing that was um, uh, uh, characteristic for that was the balcony that was kind of bringing the idea of, of waves, but they also created this kind of landscape that uh, you could have on a balcony, uh, you know, like in Mendozoro, you have this, this kind of um, slope going to the, to, the, to, the, to the beach, which still uh, reusing the local characteristics in order to give a, a kind of provenance to the, to the architecture itself. And uh, the 
next uh, island was, uh, was uh, meant for five star hotel. And it was somehow superimposed you know, in the middle of, the, of this, of this, of this uh, year. And you were studying how to design these buildings uh, that uh, you don't have this kind of situation that you need to go around it, but rather through it. And uh, we designed it as a kind of loop uh, that is sitting on, on, uh, on this island, but you still there is this kind of open space inside and you can go through it. So uh, standing on one side of the pier, you can see the, 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 the end of it. And this, the whole hotel is designed as this kind of uh, machine, you know, to be self-sufficient and uh, and basically uh, work as a as a mini uh, uh, powerhouse. And then this uh, the, the inside of the and the outside of the hotel is basically com composed of those different uh, public spaces. So uh, you have this kind of semi-public space for the uh, for the people who uh, who are uh, uh, the guests of the hotel on the on the, on the roof. Or you have this public uh, open, uh, this, uh, this public park for everyone uh, on the ground level. You have this kind of openings, uh, a cave like uh, towards the sea that everyone can walk in, and so on, so on. So, our mission was to introduce as much as possible of this kind of unprotected public spaces within the hotel, besides the given program of the hotel. And also, uh, as you can see here, uh, standing inside, it's not that like you are in a completely enclosed situation. You, you can still see the, see the sea and, and at the beginning and the end of the pier as well. And at the very end, we have placed the public program, which is uh, uh, cons consists of, of two uh, functions, which one is a, um, a, a kind of a beach and, uh, and the pool, and the other is sauna. And it's also like designed uh, out of from wood in a, in a simple manner, just to kind of have this public uh, view towards the sea, not occupied by any uh, commercial uh, buildings that are on our back. And uh, the, this kind of revitalization, the, the, the aim was you know, to bring new qualities basically to, to the pier. So not only by adding those new functions that will help to, uh, to bring some life into that pier and to revitalize it, uh, but also by taking uh, uh, care of those uh, public programs that uh, that could uh, uh, just to, to make this kind of you know make it as a as a public attraction again uh, with some kind of destination at the very end and also to make it a bit like a, a kind of icon for for for, for the course uh, uh, in order to uh, to have this kind of you know like. Um, coastal provenance. And the last project uh, is again about Warsaw. Mm, it's, uh, let's say, a, a similar comment on the, of the state of the city and uh, uh, the new project uh, from last year. And it's a commentary on, on how the Warsaw is changing and growing. And um, we were taking uh, this. Uh, Working on a, on, a, on an area on the suburbs, uh, post-industrial area next to the steelwork that is still uh, um, existing in the city, uh, and uh, we are trying to uh, to create this kind of uh, new productive city, uh, and that could uh, be uh, a, a, again a kind of a model estate uh, for today's Warsaw. Uh, so we were looking at, let's say, the same things at, as, as the project that I was showing at the very beginning, so this urban cocktail. Uh, so we're looking uh, how now it looks like the, the city itself. So it's still this kind of star, but now we kind of inverted the situation. So because it's less and less of this green and it's kind of defragmented, maybe it's more of those kind of hands, but they are still green, let's say. And the urban fabric is more like kind of the wedge right now. Uh, we were looking uh, on it from that, uh, that, that point of view, and we were looking at one of those wedges, so this kind of built up fabrics, um, and how it corresponds to, uh, to the greenery or to these open, uh, undeveloped areas uh, between those wedges. And this, this is uh, it's starting um, in the Ohota district, and let's say this wedge ends up uh, where the uh, 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 Okenche Airport is. And uh, you can see that there is this kind of green uh, border to it. 
on both sides, and there are some kind of uh, smaller parks in, inside. But altogether, it's creating this kind of you know a network of greens, so you can move actually from one side to another towards this kind of green networks. If you believe it's something interesting and something that we could work on uh, uh, as a as an idea uh, for this new uh, district, and. Um, the ambition of the new district was to blend this kind of dense, very dense, because we need a lot of housing. Uh, basically, there is a huge shortage of new housing, and still a lot of people in Poland are uh, forced to live with their parents. And uh, this is one of the main goals for the cities now to, to uh, design uh, uh, housing districts in a sustained way, not on, even if on the periphery then uh, in such a way that uh, all the functions, necessary functions are kind of uh, within that area and you didn't need to travel for, through the whole city, you know, to, to send a kid to, uh, uh, to a kindergarten or to school or to go to a doctor. So we wanted to have this kind of healthy uh, district, uh, still quite dense, but with a very uh, organized green public space in between that will be possible to also uh, to cultivate them. And uh, I will explain now how, what, what the strategy is. So uh, the first thing was to think about a kind of a new industry because uh, it's a huge area and uh, it's not possible to be developed at once and uh, even at twice. So uh, what to do now with uh, the, this huge land that exists there? Uh, the land is highly contaminated because of the steel works that uh, uh, recycles uh, steel. And they are storing the steel uh, outside of the factory. And also they produce the, 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 the way how the steel works, it produces a lot of dust. And uh, this dust is everywhere and it contaminates the whole area. So uh, what we're thinking now, like if you have all those sites, that are, and it's not really possible to be developed right now because it's all like toxic soil. So maybe we just turn a part of that land, we start to cultivate this land and make it a kind of super fertile land in it on this side to make a factory for a new soil and then we can reuse it in the whole world so to start to develop all those kind of toxic lands that we have there and that could be a start for this kind of a new uh, type of industry that could happen uh, on that uh, huge unused uh, land right now and uh, uh, we were looking at this area also like what's going on there right now so we have this kind of on the left uh, Upper left, you can see there is this kind of factory, and there is a lot of empty space around it. And then the city is growing like a bird around it because there is this, there is a noise, there is this dust, there is the contamination, and there is also lack of infrastructure. So everything is growing around like a bird, but this is super bad in our uh, opinion because then you have the city like on this big screen to the right, where you have this green. Uh, uh, like it's like a cheese, uh, like a Swiss cheese uh, or that cheese you, with, you, with this huge like Emmental or Swiss cheese. So you have this huge uh, gap and uh, this creates this dysfunctional city. So we were thinking, yeah, it should be the other way. So you have the bubble, which are uh, um, uh, dense uh, city. And then you have this tiny kind of network in between those bubbles uh, that creates this kind of you know, sustainable situation. So you have the green network to move in between those bubbles, but still the bubbles are bubbles and not a huge empty land. And uh, so we started to develop this area uh, uh, from those little wedges. Uh, and uh, they were arranged around uh, uh, central space, like the kind of uh, in a star-like manner as well, or sun-like manner, where when the sun is this kind of uh, uh, public space and the wedges are highly developed uh, dense uh, areas. And then uh, there are four, basically four uh, sub-districts in this area that we envisioned. Uh, each has this kind of prominent central space, which is linked and rooted in the existing situation or the uh, existing characteristic of that place. And then uh, you can travel or move uh, in between them uh, through those uh, green spaces uh, without using car, you know, or uh, or any transportation. So this is like a, a simple uh, uh, diagram, just uh, showing it again. So you have urban tissue and then public domain in between. 
and uh, this 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 kind of green uh, public domain and the ambitions uh, are described in the next uh, next slides and what we thought you know it's also an opportunity to kind of experiment and bring this kind of new technologies to, to life so besides just you can introduce a new uh, methods of, 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 of transportation. So use this, you know, uh, uh, electric bikes, uh, you can uh, have uh, car sharing. The, there is an existing metro line that could be extended. And there is a possibility for, uh, for electric buses uh, within the, the scheme. Uh, we can uh, use uh, some uh, technology within the facade of the building. Basically, you can blend the, the green within the buildings and to have this kind of uh, um, district that will be an icon of, of, of Warsaw's ambition and also positions on a, on a map as a city that really cares and has uh, uh, and would like to, to have this kind of uh, impact of the, on, on the planning in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the 21st century. And uh, uh, as you can see, like those spaces in between and those dense areas, uh, you always have those vistas, which is super important because then you can navigate through the city to understand where the uh, destination is. Also by leaving some of those uh, um, uh, um, industrial icons that exist on the site, you, you still can also feel the heritage uh, of, the, of, of the place and uh, having this, this uh, history of the, of the heavy industry and then uh, being reinterpreted new productivity of having the dense city with the business and living in one and uh, the possibility to create like, all these kind of you know, new things inside and also the food production of this fertile soil that is a basis for uh, for let's say a sustainable uh, uh, city right now because as we know we will be forced to also cultivate uh, and produce food in, inside of the city so it's just looking uh, uh, ahead and, and understanding uh, how the city will change. So this is like an image of the master plan. It's not the last uh, stage that we envisioned because we don't want to design something for the next 50 years. It's more like 10, 15 years. So on the, on the left, you still see like this big uh, production of land that we envisioned. On the, on the upper right, there is this existing uh, work and uh, we uh, wanted to create a kind of a border because we believe it is highly uh, highly uh, toxic the whole thing and in a way that the worst is probably the noise and uh, and the dust produced by by by, by recycling the steel and uh, so we, we wanted to have this kind of um, greenhouse uh, uh, being a kind of a fence around it so in that greenhouse, we could have all these kind of uh, functions like uh, offices and, and, and place for the workers, and also a production of you know uh, healthy uh, things that will filter through this kind of greenhouse. We could filter the air uh, and the noise towards the, the the surrounding, and then we, we will able only to develop uh, develop the, the area that has a huge potential, also because of this. Uh, Metro line that is uh, now ending uh, on, on the border. And then uh, on, on, on below, you can see like uh, uh, what is the scale of that uh, land and, and what is the potential. So you have this kind of smaller uh, wedges which be, could be developed uh, at, at once uh, by, by one developer or three developers. And, uh, and then the spaces in between uh, are those green uh, areas. But what, when we were thinking about those green areas, it's not only green because it's you no know, who has the money to cultivate that green. But we're thinking that maybe all the public program could be uh, blended within the green, and then it, it, it's kind of it's a part, but still it's you know like surrounding of a building that is a public building. For it. So it, it could be uh, then uh, taken care of by those institutions, and because it's often that on those big estates you have the greenery, but the greenery is in a bad shape because no one money or ability to take care of it. So by placing these functions that could um, blend with the greenery and could correspond uh, with those, uh, with, with it, uh, it allows us to, uh, to basically um, uh, 
take care of it and be sure that it will happen. Not like in, uh, in you know, in, in 70s or 60s where they're building all those estates, but then the public uh, never, uh, uh, even if, if, if it was on paper, it was never uh, actually realized. So okay, that's it. And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, ask. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.